So we don't say Shavua Tov. It's Motzei Shabbat, Parshat Vayelech, 5776. And this is the first, it was the first Shabbat of the year. And it's going to be Yom Kippur this week. Gemar Chatimat Tova to everybody. It should be a good year. I heard a very interesting thing this morning from Rabbi Rafael Minkowitz here in Tinek in the name of the Lubavitcher Rebbe that until Rosh Hashanah we focus on what's called Avodah Mi'ira'ah serving God out of fear which needs to be understood um, but when, after Rosh Hashanah it's serving Hashem out of love or tshuva miyira versus teshuva me'ava, returning to Hashem out of fear versus returning to Hashem out of love. So since we're in the period after Rosh Hashanah, let's just focus first on what does this mean to return to Hashem out of love? How does a person achieve love of God? I once had a young man actually call me and ask me this, and this was he was so distressed about this question. Actually, this question is so important that the Rambam, Maimonides, deals with it in the second chapter of his magnum opus, the Mishnah Torah. And the Rambam says that you have to start by contemplating. You have to think, you have to notice all the great things that God does. And this is basically in Hebrew, this is an act of hakara, of noticing, of taking note of something. And we have a term in Hebrew called hakara tatov, of, of noticing the good. It's usually translated in English as gratitude, but that, as I've mentioned in the past, is really a mistake. Hakarat HaTov is an intellectual activity in which you take note of the good some, that someone does for you, whereas gratitude is an emotional state in which your feelings are affected. And what the Rambam is explaining to us is that in order to get to those emotions, we can, get, we can actually consciously get to these emotions of loving God by coming first, by starting with an intellectual activity. And the Torah requires us to, to develop this pathway. And we can develop this pathway with, with human beings, and we can develop this pathway with, with God. So, and if we can look back into our own experience, of a time when we didn't know that someone cared about us. And then we found out that somebody likes us, that somebody cares about us. Suddenly our whole feeling towards that person can change, or does change. And so that's, that's what we can do at this time of year. We can do it every day, in fact. For instance, before we say Shema, we say the bracha of Baruch Atah Hashem, HaBocher Be'amo Yisrael Be'ahava. Blessed are you Hashem, who has chosen the Jewish people with love. If we look carefully, the theme that God loves us is present throughout the davening. And if we stop and we think, wow, God loves us, God takes care of us, God has always taken care of us, God has promised to take care of us, we can then by recognizing this fact, then actually begin to develop and to access the feelings of gratitude which lead also to the feelings of love and admiration and, and, and drawing close to God out of, out of that uh, consciousness. So um, a student at Ramaz this week asked me, Rabbi, isn't Yom Kippur like really hard for you? I mean, you know, it's one thing to go to shul for an hour or two or even three, but to sit in shul for, you know, six hours straight. And in fact, then I told him that I'll probably dive in somewhere there will only be a 15-minute break 
in the middle of the day, and it's basically like 11, 12 hours straight uh, of davening. And what about fasting? Isn't fasting like hard for you? So I tell them actually fasting is physically sometimes very challenging for me. Um, but I said to him, first of all, there's a big difference between someone who's 15 years old and someone who's 60 years old. Just as you know, they say that if from the time you start working, you save 6% of everything you earn, and by the time you retire, you'll have a million dollars. Six percent is not a lot, a lot. And so, if a person consistently saves and, and and invests, you wind up with something much bigger at the end than you could have than you could have really properly imagined. And so, this is true also in the religious and the spiritual dimension. If you have a regular spiritual habit, a regimen, an investment that you invest on a regular basis, in the end that you will reap much more than you could ever imagine when you're just putting those few few, you know, pennies in the box. After a while it accumulates. So what sort of investment can a person make? Well, I told this young man on the most basic level, I said to you, do you use a, a machzer with an English translation? He said, no. I don't. I only have Hebrew in mind. So I said, I, I would go out of my mind if I had to sit in shul for a whole day and not understand what's written in, in front of me because he also admitted that he didn't really you know, understand everything. So a very important investment is get hold of a machzer with English. But not only that, invest in the time of preparing the davening before you go to shul. I remember by Soloveitchik, of blessed memory, recanting how his grandfather, of Chaim Soloveitchik, would be lying on the couch before Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, reciting the davening by heart to prepare the davening in advance. You shouldn't just walk into shul and cold. And now, now okay, let's open up and turn pages. You should really pay attention and study the davening beforehand. Um, and the art scroll, Machzor, really is an excellent tool. It also has a lot of introductory material uh, and, and wonderful commentary. And it's one of the best things that is available to the English-speaking public today. Um, I also... Um, we, we, while we were sitting there, another uh, teacher came by, and he mentioned that in advance of Yom Kippur, he, pre pre he prepares index cards. And on these index cards, he writes down things that he, not on Yom Kippur, obviously, in advance of Yom Kippur, he writes down things that he wants to think about during Yom Kippur, during times of the davening when he, he, they, he's not as so engaged or doesn't demand his participation. Let's, let's say when the chazan is doing some of the prayers that apply only to the chazan. So, um, or when his mind starts to wander, he'll take out these cards and he'll examine, have made I, uh, notes about things that happened during the year, people that he, uh, needs to make amends with or he wants a deeper relationships or different types of activities that he's evaluating and thinking about past year, coming year. And this is a type of investment that can really enrich a person's experience of Yom Kippur. What is my relationship with Hashem? What is my relationship with other people? What is my relationship with myself? And then I asked the question, and especially in regard, uh, in combining this, you know, the, the long marathon of, of, of Yom Kippur and the fast. So I said, I asked the students, um, if you got an invitation from the President of the United States, or maybe the Prime Minister of Israel, maybe it's some, you know, even your sports hero or whatever, you know, the Chief Rabbi of Israel, you know, and they, off, and they offered you an opportunity to spend a whole day with them, 
go, with the, do, going through their routine. But they mentioned that it, the day that you're going to be coming, it's going to be a very, very busy day, and there will be no time to eat. Would you accept the invitation? So clearly most of us would not hesitate to say, yes, I'll take advantage of the opportunity to be with somebody, whether you agree with his politics or not, but the, just the, the greatness of his office, the situation, to be with that person, uh, especially if you have an admiration for that person, and you know that that person cares about you, that you, and, you, and, you, and, you and that person loves you, so certainly you'll say yes. What about eating? It's like it's going to be such a special time. Who needs to eat? Who could eat? And that's what Yom Kippur can be. Yom Kippur is this awesome day to spend with God. And you know what? It's like eating's not important. You know, yes, there are many different uh, levels of understanding the fast on Yom Kippur. We've, we've, we've abused the, the physical pleasures and we're going to forswear them for the day. But that, that's one level. But there's a higher level in which the idea is that that I don't I don't need to eat because I'm so fully nourished by the presence of Hashem. I, I wish I could be like Moses for forty days and forty nights to just be with Hashem with food and water don't matter, and that's a moment of uh, that we have on Yom Kippur. May Hashem bless us to really recognize how much he loves us, how much he wants us to be with him. And he says to us, you know, all year long you've done what you've done and now you want to come close to me, I'm going to clean you up and start you off with a new year. Let's, we'll spend the day together in, in, in rediscovering the, the loving relationship between God and us and We'll start the year over again, and Bezrat Hashem, we will all be part of that Gemara Chatimat Tova, and be blessed for a year of closeness with Hashem that grows day by day. Gemara Chatimat Tova, everybody should have an easy and meaningful and rewarding Yom Kippur.